Hey guys, Rod here, and today I'm going to do a video for you uh, that I've wanted to do for quite a few years. Um, it's I'm going to explain how my solar hot water system works in our house and saves us quite a lot of money. Um, it's a little bit controversial the way I've done this, and um, I'll quote my old professor friend. He said, Rod. You manage to achieve things because you don't know that you can't do it. Anyway, uh, what I want to say right now is that this is purely experimental. Okay, it's an experiment I've been doing for 10 years. I set this system up 10 years ago. It is more than likely highly illegal electric electrically. However, it is an incredibly simple system that puts electricity straight into the hot water cylinder through the, the simplest of circuits. So anyway, without any further ado, I will grab the phone and I will turn it around. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is my solar system. So if we have a look in here, this is the wire coming down from the roof, which is connected to four solar panels. And we've got AC coming in through that power cord there. You see it's switched on. Right here we have a timer and a contactor. Here we have a thermostat for the hot water cylinder, and there is the hot water element. Now I'll show you what one of those looks like. That is actually what a hot water element is and it just screws in like that with an o-ring seal at this end and it really just looks like a giant sized electric jug element. And this one here is a three kilowatt element. 3,000 watts per hour can be uh, when it's connected to 230 volt AC or mains power. Now I might get a little bit technical with this talk, however I'm going to describe this circuit diagram and if you get a bit lost then just listen to my voice and understand that it has been working for 10 years so it's not a theoretical thing, it's actually been proven that it works and not only that I've tested it for 10 years. So what we've basically got is on the roof we've got four solar panels and they are 250 watt each and there's four of them at 24 volt panels that are connected in series so basically we can, when the sun's shining on these panels we can get a DC voltage plus and minus of 120 volts DC so what we do with that is we take that and we put it through a car fuse. Uh, there's the car fuse there. So just a standard 10 amp car fuse. And um, by the way, this will be a relatively long video, but it's just good to get it recorded. And so the DC side goes into a bridge rectifier. Now I'll show you what a bridge rectifier looks like. It's a very old electronic device. Basically, it's four diodes connected between four terminals. It's almost the symbol for it is this, but it almost looks like it. You can see there's one, two, three, four diodes. So what's going to happen is that no matter what polarity you connect this up, it's always going to be plus on this side and minus on this side. Now, theoretically, they say you can't connect AC to DC. However, on this side here, the 230 volt input is there. Phase is going through a contactor and a timer. So the timer in this case I've set up from, so it comes on at 1am in the morning and off at 6am. That's just to top our hot water up if we, so we have a nice hot shower in the morning. So that contactor there will only close at night time uh, between 1am and 6am then we go to a thermostat here it is here this this one here is actually a capillary tube thermostat i like that because it runs with no power and then 
we go into the phase side of another bridge rectifier and neutral comes straight up and into the other side of the bridge rectifier so there there is where the AC is in and this is where the DC comes out now this is where it gets a bit wild what I've actually done here is connected plus to plus on the two regulators bridge rectifiers sorry and minus to minus on the two bridge rectifiers and between plus and minus I'm going down to the three kilowatt element the resistance of a three kilowatt element is 17.6 ohms and of course just for safety the whole circuit everywhere is earthed and it's earthed onto the cylinder as well so that's if there's any electrical faults we also have a little log burner connected to our hot water cylinder and that's that is the inlet and that is the outlet and it works on the principle that hot water rises so it goes in the wet backs in the back of the fire here and as it heats up the hot water goes up and the cold water comes out here there's the wet back connection there and there's the cold side there so those that pipe goes to the bottom of the wet back this pipe goes to the top of the wet back this system pretty much uses makes all our hot water for us and um, so I'll just go over a few more things about this double bridge uh, bridge rectifier system so basically when the power comes in now it's going to get a bit complicated you get AC and that is a 50 Hertz sine wave so 50 times it goes up and down 230 volts alternating current and that's what the waveform looks like after it goes for a bridge rectifier everything goes positive so in actual fact your sine wave turns into a sort of like a a pterodactyl back or a you know like a whole lot of fins going up and of course when we've got the solar on that is going to have 120 volts continuously right along now interestingly if you connect both up at once i.e there's ac coming in here and there's dc coming in here the energy is really the area under the graph and you'll see that there's only these tiny little bits where the dc is having any effect so i worked out that it's roughly it's less than five percent increase in power which is absolutely a perfect voltage because it hardly makes any difference and the element can tolerate the increase in power there's the element there so it is okay to have ac and dc on at the same time however this is very unlikely to happen because we have it only switched on in darkness when there is no sun shining on the solar panel so that's the first safety device is this the second is that when they're both on, it's not actually stressing the element out very much at all. Anyway, just some quick power readings here. Um, so, DC, and this is Ohm's law we're using here. So, power is voltage squared over resistance, which is 120 volt DC is the maximum from the panel, panels. 17.6 Ohm which means the maximum power I can get is 18, 818 watts of power on the DC side and the current is V over R on 20 over 7, so it's 6.8 amps so the 10 amp fuse is actually fine uh, in this case now we're going to look at the AC the same Ohm's law 230 squared is the voltage and 17.6 equals 3000 watts well how about that it was says it's a three kilowatt element 3000 watts perfect current in this case is 230 over 70 which is 13 amps so there's quite a lot less power when it's dc however during the day when it's a sunny day that more than heats up the water for our shower a good shower um 
uses about one kilowatt hour, which is around about 30 cents. So if you have a reasonable shower, not too long, about six minutes, and you, you will be using around about 30 cents worth of electricity. So uh, we easily get a couple of good hot showers in the morning. This here is just a quick way for me to read the voltage and I can see the power output. So let's just turn the voltmeter on. This is just straight across the element. And it's a very good day today. We've got 109 volts. We'll call that 110. Which is around about 687 watts of free power going straight in and heating the hot water. I'll just show you this here, this is a wee thermometer I've got on the lower part of the cylinder, right down here. And that's showing 23 degrees. We'll get back to that and see if it's actually climbing. So how about that, 100, 108 volts now. And um, just one last thing we've got is hanging off plus and minus across the element is a 9-volt is a DC power pack. Here it is there, it's just a little plug pack. So I've just connected this plug here, a female plug, to directly to the element on this terminal. Terminals there. And what that does is drives a fan and a heat sink and on, on a heat sink because down here I've calculated that it could be up to 18 watts of heat coming off the bridge rectifier because there's a 1.4 volt voltage drop across two diodes 0.7 each so um there it is and you can hear the fan going and i think if you look very carefully you'll see the fins of the heat sink there and that's the two bridge rectifiers there this is the ac side and this is the dc side so I'll just take you and show you the source of power for this system. That's the wet back. I'll let the fire a little bit, even though it's a bit of a sunny day out there, just so you can see. So you see that plate in the back? It's got a, a, a U of copper um, clamped onto the back of it. So that plate picks up the heat and transfers it into the copper pipes and you can see the two copper pipes there so it's coming the cold water is coming in at the bottom and out at the top through the wall and conveniently the hot water cylinder is directly behind the fire perfect place to have it and last of all i'll just show you the solar panels So that's the four solar panels. You can see a bit of lichen on them. They've uh, been there 10 years and it really has not given me any trouble. Let's go back to the hot water cylinder to finish the video. So basically this system has uh, was installed and 2014 it cost me $1,200 at the time you probably do it cheaper now because panels have gone down in price and it saves around about 2,000 kilowatts a year or around about $600 a year so we have actually saved $6,000 with the fire and the solar um, way more than what the initial setup cost was so I think it's a really good system it really does scare a lot of people this uh, AC and DC feeding into one element um, a lot of uh, electricians have looked at this and said you can't do that <laughs> but there it is it's working I'll put the camera in here Turn it so I really don't know what to do with this. I mean, you could actually finish the product off and 
put it on the market and have it copied six months later by the first person that wants to copy it or but what I'm doing is really just putting it out there I'm asking for a few comments about it uh, maybe some people can see some improvements uh, one of the improvements I'm trying to do is use a large MOSFET to and make a, a DC thermostat because effectively the power on the element is actually DC all the time so just one DC element could make it work combined with a timer but anyway it's very 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 simple system saves a lot of money payback is probably less than two or three years if every house did this uh, everyone would save $600 a year um, and it would probably ease the problems with our lack of power at the moment just putting it out there look forward to reading some of your comments have a good day catch you later